So the next topic we'll talk about is polluting the global scope. When you're working with large projects, if we're creating JavaScript in a lot of the ways we've looked at so far, we're creating a lot of things at that global scope. If we look at this example, we'll see that we have a couple of variables that we've created at the global scope, as well as another function at that global scope. This all works fine because when we call this function, we're using a closure to use the app name and compile. And the problem we have here is that if we have a lot of projects that all are doing the same sort of JavaScript, what happens if someone redefines compile time or someone redefines print app info because their particular library used those same variable names or function names. As we saw earlier in this course, if we define a variable or a function a second time, that new declaration takes over. We don't have the notion of an overloaded function or an error when you redefine a variable to tell us that this is a problem. So a solution here is to use something called anonymous self-executing functions. This helps you protect that global namespace by using scoping of a function. So here we have that same set of variables and function, but if we want to protect them from the global scope, we can simply surround them with a function. If we put them in a function, it hides all of this from the global scope because again, this is creating a, a scope because it's inside of a function. But that's not really good enough. We can't call the print app info because it was defined inside the function and isn't visible outside of that scope. So if we add an anonymous self-executing function here, this is telling us to create a function, and this is an anonymous function because it doesn't have a name, and then having us execute it immediately by adding the parentheses at the bottom. So this code, as the script is being read in, will immediately be run. And so this is going to define the variables and the function in this example. Still protects us from the global scope, but it doesn't work because we can't get at that print app info. It's still inside of a function. You could go ahead and pass in the global object, in this case that's a window as it is in most browsers, and add the items we want in the global scope to the global object. In this case we're passing in the window and then we can see that we're adding the print app info function to the global scope by adding it to that window object. We can now use the print app info because it's in that global scope. But even this is still not going to protect us from having functions that exist at the global scope that may be overwritten. The real trick here is to use real namespaces. Using namespaces to really protect your code from that global scope. This is the same reason we use namespaces in C Sharp. The JavaScript doesn't have namespaces as such, so we can mimic them by using local objects. So here's an example. We can construct a namespace by declaring it in the global scope, because again, the namespace itself will exist in that global scope, and we're assigning it by saying, make it the existing name of the namespace in case it hasn't been declared, or start it with an empty object declaration. The idea behind this is the first script that's executed that creates this namespace will create it, and then everyone else who needs this namespace will simply use the existing one that was declared in an earlier script or an earlier part of the script. Once we have the namespace, we can simply add functions and properties to the namespace, just like we would with a C-sharp namespace. Here's another example. We're creating the top-level namespace and immediately creating a sub-namespace. This is akin to what you would do with real namespaces, where you would typically have a company name and then the part of the project, and you could go down the line and create you know, deeper nested versions of this. So in this example, we can go ahead and just create a new customer function that's inside that model's namespace. Now let's bring together namespaces and anonymous self-executing functions to really solve the global pollution problem. So here we start with a function where we're passing in a namespace that we're going to use to define and add things to the namespace that other parts of our code are going to need. Passing into this anonymous self-executing function, we're going to pass in that Wilder Minds 
namespace. Notice I've prefixed it with window dot so that JavaScript knows that we're adding it to the global namespace. Window is typically the alias for the global namespace in JavaScript inside of a browser. This may be a little different if you're working with something like node.js, but the concept is the same. Here we're saying that if Wilder Minds has already been defined on window, pass that in, otherwise set the Wilder Minds namespace to be the empty object that we're going to add stuff to. Inside the function, we can then use that namespace to add our new functionality to the namespace, in this case, a function called current time. So as we might have a number of these files that are all adding to the Wilder Minds namespace, we can then access any of this functionality in other scripts as we need them, so that the startup or initialization scripts for particular pages can use the entire API that's been put together in those namespaces across separate JavaScript files if necessary.